Welcome to Reviving Your Day with Rev. Tony Workman. Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome once again to Reviving Your Day, a show that is dedicated to preaching the Word, preaching the cross, and preaching redemption to a lost and dying world. I am Rev. Tony Workman, and it is my privilege to be the host of this show. Thank you, WYBU, for having me on this show. Now let us go to the, to the Lord in prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you, Lord, and I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that if anybody does not know you as their personal Lord and Savior, that today would be the day of salvation. And Lord, I pray for the church of the living God, that the church would rise up and be warriors for Jesus in the coming in 2011. That 2011 will be the year of revival. That 2011 will be the year that, that God really makes a move in this country. Oh God, I pray that this show will make an impact in the hearts of people and that my words will resonate and they will not return back void and I ask these things in Jesus mighty and matchless name Amen Oh, oh it is time for revival in this country it is time for a fresh movement of Almighty God Oh, it is time for spiritual awakening so if you would take me, uh, go with me to Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. And if you don't have a Bible, I encourage you to buy a Bible. You can find one at Walmart for $5. Red letter edition as well. So I encourage you to get a hold of the Word of God and to read it daily and meditate on it day and night. So if you would turn with me to the book of Romans chapter 13. And we will read from verses 11 through 14. And that, knowing the time, starting in verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time, it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of of darkness and let us put on the armor of light let us walk honestly as in the day not in rioting and drunkenness not in chambering and wantonness not in strife and envying but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. I want you to know church of the living God that it is high time that we awake out of our sleep too long has a church of a living God been asleep too long have we been in slumber but it is high time that we wake up it is high time that revival returns to America to this great land to this nation that was founded upon the principles of the word of of Almighty God I want you to know that our redemption draweth nigh soon and very soon we are going to see the king the rapture could happen at any time and it is time for the church to get ready for I am eagerly anticipating the return of the king oh how sweet it's going to be when Jesus returns again oh it's gonna, he's going to come as a thief in the night and he wants to church to be ready he wants his church to return back to their first love oh the night is far spent oh it is far spent but the day is at hand the day is at hand for the returning of our king for the returning of the messiah for now is our salvation nearer 
than when we believed. It is near, folks. How near? I do not know. Because no man knoweth the time nor the hour except the Son of Man, except God Himself, the Father Himself. But praise be to God, I am ready for the return. Oh, and it says, Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Too many times in this world today we see that our world is full of immorality. It is full of drunkenness. It is full of envy. It is full of strife. It is full of contention. It is full of division. Oh, but church of the living God, we are called to be separate from the world. We are called to be different than the world. We are called to be set apart in the world. And First John tells us, to love not the world neither the things that are in the world yet if any man loveth the world and the love of the Father is not in him that's not what I said but that's what God's holy infallible inerrant inspired and authoritative word says oh praise his holy name and in verse 14 it says but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ it's time for the church to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. It is time for spiritual awakening. And make not provision for the flesh. Because the flesh warreth against the spirit. They do not go together. The flesh wants to, to sin. The flesh wants what the flesh wants. But the spirit man, the spirit man inside of you is what God uses and what he will use for revival in our day and time. I want you to know that in Acts 1.8, Jesus gives us a great commission. He says in Acts 1.8, But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. Church, we ought to be about the business. If we truly want revival, we need to be about the business of fulfilling the Great Commission. Oh, if we were to have the same Pentecostal power that the church experienced, then in the 21st century church, we must become a 1st century church. Oh, the Pentecostal power is available for believers today if they will just sell out and present their bodies a living sacrifice which is holy and unacceptable to God, which is for your reasonable service. Oh, we shall receive power. We have Holy Spirit power living inside of us. So in 2011, I have a challenge to you. I want you to go out and fulfill the Great Commission. Go out and tell us others about Jesus about what he did oh it is so precious what Jesus did oh the blood of Jesus that washes away all sin oh the blood of Jesus that makes me white as snow oh the blood of Jesus that comforts me in my storms and in my afflictions oh the precious blood of Jesus Oh, but in Acts 1 8 it says that ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. We must first start out locally. We must first start out evangelizing our own town, our own city. Oh, there are so many people that live just a, just a block away that do not know Jesus. And you know that person. And at any time, they could slip into eternity. At any time, they could go to a devil's hell. My challenge is for you to go out and witness to these people and tell them that Jesus loves them, that he died for their sins, that he shed his blood so that they might have eternal life oh it is the only thing worth doing souls matter in the kingdom of God that's why Jesus came he came to seek and to save that which was lost oh so I am believing and expecting great things to happen in 2011 oh may God 
in, in, in His precious Holy Spirit inhabit His people and may He come down and may it be like the old Pentecost of old where thousands in one day come to know Him. Oh, it can happen. But we must sell out and we must understand the source of our power and the source of our power is the Spirit of a living God and He Himself is what indwells us and what illuminates the precious truth of Almighty God and what gives us strength and boldness to go out and proclaim to a lost and dying world that Jesus still saves. Praise be to His holy name. I want you to understand that the disciples... They were wholly surrendered to Christ. They were totally surrendered to Christ in this new year. It is time for the church to be totally surrendered to Jesus Christ. To say no to the devil. To say no to the world. And to be set apart. And to be different. Oh, it is time for the church to be obedient. As the disciples were. The disciples were obedient they recognized their need. In Acts 1.14 it says that these all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. I want you to know that they all continued with one accord. Oh, it is good for the, for the brethren to come together and dwell in unity. That's what the, is the problem with American Christianity today. It's too many people, too many churches are not unified. They fight over the most stupid of things. Well, the carpet ain't pretty. So I'm going to leave the church. Well, I say hogwash. I say that that's not what God called us to do. God called us to love one another. God didn't call us to fight over carpet for, for crying out loud. But God called us to love one another. And so my challenge to you is just love one another. Be of good cheer. Jesus has overcome the devil. He has overcome the world. But you see the disciples recognize their need. They recognize their need to pray. They came together in one accord in prayer and supplication. Oh, and oh, the church needs prayer. The church needs to pray. I think sometimes we just need to get honest with God. Fall on our knees and say, God, I need your help. I need your mercy and provision daily. I need you for you are my source of strength. You are my only hope. And without Christ, we are nothing. Let's just get honest. Without Christ, we are absolutely nothing. I want you to see that the disciples intensely desired God for 10 days. They bent their thought in prayer largely so that the Holy Spirit would come, so that Pentecost would come. Oh, if we just got together and prayed and prayed until the answer came, just prayed through like the old Pentecostals once did, just prayed through until the answer comes. Oh, there is power in prayer. Oh, gee, the prayer is the, is the key to unlocking God's heart. It is the conduit by which God uses to help His people and oh, how He loves prayer. It is, it is like a sweet savor in the in the, in, in the night nostrils of God oh it smells so good to hear his children praying and we need to pray and we need to pray hard because we're living in trying times we're living in horrible times we're living in wicked times we're living in times where people no longer call on the name of the Lord we're living in times where kids can't even pray in school oh bless the Lord we need revival oh God I pray for oh God we need revival in this land Oh God, we need revival in our children. Our children need to come to church. They need to hear the precious blood about the precious blood of Jesus. They need to hear and study the word of God. We need revival. The disciples prayed. The disciples believed. The church of God needs to have faith. 
only a, a faith of the size of a grain of a mustard seed. They expected and believed God. They knew that something was about to happen. And I feel in my spirit and in my bones. All oh, these bones want to preach, amen. Oh, but I feel it in my spirit that God is getting ready to do something great. God is getting ready to revive this world. God is getting ready to revive this nation. All too long have we been asleep. It is time to wake up. It is time for spiritual awakening. How was the Spirit manifested in their lives? All the apostles testified to the mighty works of God. There was no talk of self. Self was lost sight of. You see, in America today, church, we need to die to self. We need to sacrifice ourselves. We need to crucify ourselves daily. I know it's not easy to do because self rears up and shows its ugly head sometimes. But we have got to crucify ourselves. Oh, the Bible says to present yourselves as a living sacrifice, which is holy and acceptable unto God, which in which is your reasonable service. Oh, they spoke in the Spirit's power. They gave up their own strength and wisdom. I can't do anything. I'm just a messenger. But I can't do anything except the Spirit empowers me and uses me to preach the Word. They gave up their own strength and wisdom and used God. God has unlimited strength. He has unlimited capability. He is a God who is who is awesome in power. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He sees all. He is omnipresent. He is everywhere at all times. Yea, though I make my bed in hell, there He is to lift me up out of my despair and out of my affliction. Oh, if you're lost today, Jesus wants to reach down and lift you out of a horrible pit. And He wants to put a new song in your heart and a pep. In your step. Oh praise. His holy name. They preached Christ. And in Acts chapter 2. Verses 22. Through 35. Peter. Is preaching here. It's Pentecost. God has empowered Peter. And Peter if you remember was the man who. Who denied Christ. Three times. How could God use such a man like Peter who had denied Christ three times? Well, because Peter, when he denied Christ, he realized what he had done. And he asked for forgiveness. And God forgave him. And God put a message in his heart on Pentecost. And he chose to use Peter. My point is that there is no sin that God can't forgive. God can forgive you right where you're sitting. I don't care what you have done. I don't care how atrocious, how heinous, how horrible that sin might be. God can forgive you right where you're standing. So in uh, Acts chapter 2 verses 22 through 35 I will read. It says, Ye men of Israel... Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth. A man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. Him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain whom God hath raised up Praise be to God, he's no longer in the grave, for he has risen, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. For David speaketh concerning him, I foresaw the Lord always before my face, for he is on my right hand, that I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice, and my tongue was glad. Moreover also, my flesh shall rest in hope. Oh, my flesh shall rest in hope. And we have a hope today. We have hope from the precious hope giver, Jesus himself. 
because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him that the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit on his throne. And praise be to God, Jesus Christ is sitting on the throne. He is in charge. He is the big boss. He is in charge charge of every situation I don't care how difficult it might get I don't care how difficult it might seem Jesus Christ is sovereign he is on the throne and he is in charge and when daddy is on the throne the devil has got to flee praise be to his holy name and in verse 31 it says he seeing this before spake of the resurrection of Christ that his soul was not left in hell his, neither his flesh did see corruption. This Jesus hath God raised up. Whereof we are all witnesses. I am a witness of the fact that Jesus Christ has risen indeed. Therefore being by the right hand of God exalted and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost he has shed forth this which we now see and hear. For David is not ascended into the heavens, but he saith himself, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand until I make thy foes thy footstool. Oh, I want you to see that they preached Christ. That's what we need in the church today. We need some preachers that will preach Christ. That will preach Christ and Him crucified. That will preach the blood. Oh, it might be offensive to some, but it is the only way to heaven. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father except by me. He is the only way to heaven. Praise His holy name. And when, and when the word of God is preached, when Christ is, is preached, the Spirit begins to move. And what are the results of the Spirit moving? What are the results? Well, we see that the multitude was amazed. The multitude at Pentecost was amazed. They were marveled. They were perplexed. They couldn't believe what was happening before their very eyes. They could not believe it. They were amazed. Some mocked. Some made fun of Peter. In, in verse 13 of chapter 2 of Acts chapter 2 it says, Others mocking said, These men are full of new wine. In other words, these men are drunk. These men are drunk on wine. These men are drunk. But Peter, in verse 14, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken as ye supposed, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. No, they were not drunk. But they were filled with the Holy Ghost. They were filled with the precious Holy Spirit which gave them utterance to preach in power and in boldness. All the apostles, oh, when, when the Pharisees stood before them and said, Don't you preach in that name. Don't you preach in the name that is of Jesus. Peter looked at the Pharisees and said, I'm going to preach on anyway. And that's exactly my challenge to preachers today. Preach on anyway. If they strike us, if they betray us, if they turn our back on us, that's okay because I got to I got a heaven prepared for me. I got a place whose builder and maker is God. And one day I'm going to see Jesus. So I'm not going to worry about what somebody says. I'm going to preach. I'm going to shut the corn. I'm going to let it rip. I'm going to let people know about Jesus and his blood. Oh, these men were pricked to the very core of their being. 
that listened to Peter that day. And it says in verse 37 of chapter 2, Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the disciples, of the disciples, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, in verse 38, Repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And I want you to see in verse 41 and 42 of Acts chapter 2, it says, Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added to them about 3,000 souls. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Oh, there were 3,000 souls added to that day on Pentecost. Oh, they were, they, there was genuine conversion that took place. These men and these women believed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and they were saved and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. They listened. They listened to the Word of God. They followed the Word of God. They fellowshiped with one another. They loved one another. They broke bread together. Sometimes we just need to break bread together. Amen. And in prayer. Prayer. can we have this power in conclusion can we have this power and similar results in our churches today can we truly have a spiritual awakening the answer is yes I truly believe that God wants to revive this nation and revive this world my soul waits upon God for my expectation is from him I rejoice in the fact that you are listening to this show and I rejoice in the fact that I am a spokesman on behalf of God. I rejoice in the amount of prayer that has been lifted up for this show. And oh, it is my hope and it is my desire if you do not know Jesus that today would be the day of salvation. And if you are saved and you have become lax and apathetic in your walk, oh, I pray that this message will be the, the light that fires your bones, the light that moves you to, and convicts you, and that we will have a great awakening in America today. So let us close this time with a word of prayer. Dear gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, I come to you, and I thank you for the power of the Word of God I thank you, Lord, that it is indeed marvelous to read your word and to hear, thus saith the Lord God. Lord, I pray for this nation. I pray that this nation in 2011 has a mighty revival, a mighty movement of God, a spiritual awakening, and, and that America will never be the same again. I pray that it spills out to the whole world. And I pray and ask it, if anybody does not know Jesus, that today would be the day of salvation. So if you're watching me right now via TV and the World Wide Web, would you please play, pray this sinner's prayer with me if you want to be saved. You can call me at any time. Dear Heavenly Father, come into my heart. Be my Lord and be my Savior. I repent of my sins and I choose to serve you the rest of my days. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Thank you. Once again, for tuning in and watching Reviving Your Day. Amen. Preach the word, preach the cross. Thank you for watching Reviving Your Day with Brother Workman. Let Brother Workman hear from you. You may contact him at 478 972 2840 or THMSWRK at AOL.com. Oh,